What's going on, Tar Heel Nation? My name is Nathan. He is Alan, and we are your Heel Brothers. And welcome in to another episode of the Scouting Report. We're covering North Carolina's Week Three matchup, the NC Central Eagles. This is one I have actually been really looking uh, forward to covering because they are a very interesting team, and I cannot wait to break this team down but we have an amazing guest that's going to help us he's going to give us some knowledge and tell us about the nc central eagles that maybe some things that we don't know he is a man that covers hbcu uh, sports as a whole his name is chris stevens of chris stevens rights you don't want none I'm Chris, thank you so much for being here with us this evening and taking the time to come out here and talk the NC Central Eagles with us, man. How are you doing this evening? I'm great, Nathan. Now, thank you guys for having me on. Greatly appreciate it. Ready to uh, give you guys some inside information on North Carolina Central. Man, uh, I I've been kind of keeping an eye on you ever since. You know, I, I happened to come across you this past uh, week through the College Huddle in East Carolina. Thank you again for, uh, you know, giving us uh, his info that we can get in contact with him. Uh, but you do a great job covering HBCU sports. You also do you, uh, an HBCU sports show on Mondays. And what other days are, do, are Wednesday, you reporting? Wednesdays as well. Yes, we do. We Wednesdays do a Monday. Well. We do a Monday and Wednesday live show. Monday, we usually recap what happened in Black House football the previous weekend. And Wednesday, we start looking forward to the next weekend. And where exactly can people that may be interested, maybe they're NC Central Eagle fans that aren't familiar with your stuff and would like to to take a look at it, where can they find you? Well, for I consider HBCU Sports my day job because I have a whole bunch of other stuff going on. But you guys can find us right. at HBCUsports.com. Our YouTube channel is YouTube slash at HBCU Sports. We have live shows. We have interviews with different folks in the black college sports community we do a whole bunch of great stuff that i think you guys would like so feel free to give us a follow you know you'll never know and we we kind of cut up from time to time on matters outside of black college sports so you know right. you never know what you'll get with us so feel free to you know check us out yeah and also you're growing your own youtube channel as well and it is chris stevens writes over on youtube all that will be down in the description below that you guys can go check out and go check them out uh, be sure and go give him a follow, hit the subscribe button, hang out with him and watch uh, as he goes through and help him build up that channel, man. He does a great job over there and uh, help him out. But let's start talking about these NC Central Eagles, man. I have been really enjoying my time covering and, and kind of doing my research here uh, of this team. This is a team that for in in. And HBC, uh, HBCU standards, they're, they're, they're pretty solid ball club over there. Uh, this is a team that won the HBCU National Championship back in 2022. They won a share of the MEEK, the Mid-Eastern uh, Athletic Conference title back in 2022 as well. Trey Oliver is their head coach. Uh, he is a guy that is close friends with head coach Mac Brown. As a matter of fact, uh, Mac Brown told us in his recent press conference this past week uh, that he was the reason and, and he was a big help in getting Tez Walker uh, to North Carolina last year. And Tez, uh, unfortunately, got taken out of a few games per the NCAA, but when he did finally get to grace us with his presence, put on an absolute show, he was a speedster down the field, and he was very beloved uh, by the North Carolina family. He's done a great job over there, and I'm curious now, coming off of a quarterback and a running back, two star quarter, like a star quarterback and a star running back, the team's starting to reinvent itself. Tell us, what we can expect on Saturday when Central takes on the Tar Heels. Well, to be honest with you, this is a Central team that is completely different from the HBCU National Champion of 2022 and the uh, FCS qualifying team of 2023. Uh, quarterback Davius Richard and running back Latrell Collier, they've graduated. So the keys to the kingdom now are in the hands of junior quarterback Walker Harris, 6'3", 195 from Wake Forest. He's getting his first turn as starting quarterback and Jamari Taylor running back 5'11", 205 from Charlotte. Those are the two guys that help jumpstart the offense. They do have a tremendously talented wide receiver, Joaquin Davis, 6'4", 195 from 
Durham, but they just haven't had many opportunities to throw the ball because Central's offensive line, they're still fairly new as well. There are three new starters on that offensive line. So for Carolina, I feel like this has to be a matchup where they're kind of licking their chops in the trenches because with the experience that they have, this could be a really tough day for the Central offense. As far as what Harris does different from Richard, Harris, I believe, honestly, has a stronger arm. And, Richard's, and Richard threw for about 35 touchdowns last year, but Richard was a stronger runner. Like he literally almost pulled off the ultra rare 3,000 yard passing, 1,000 yard rushing performance wow. in 2023. He was tremendous. He should be on an NFL roster, but he had a gruesome ankle injury in one of the senior bowl games. He's still recovering from that. Want to wish him the best. Solid young man. But Harris has a really strong arm. His only start last year was against Mississippi Valley State in the, uh, Circle City Classic in Indianapolis, Indiana, and he threw for five touchdowns. So he's not a stranger to, you know, big time. When, uh, I wouldn't call Mississippi Valley State big time. We'll just say he's not a stranger to college football. But there you go. Yeah. So there's a lot to like about Central, but there's, this is still a very young team. But the talent that they have is still good enough to win the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference again. But this is going to be a challenge for them. I mean, this is North Carolina. This is a team who has very good chance to win the ACC this year. You know, that, that game against Miami, very much looking forward to seeing that one. So hopefully uh, I don't have to worry about Trey Oliver being prepared because I want to tell you guys real quick, you know, Trey Oliver story. In 2002, a young reporter with a little less facial hair than now was uh, covering Delaware State University football as a student reporter for the uh, Hornet newspaper. And the football team had this brash, outspoken defensive backs coach who said he had the best DB core in the MEAC. And he said that the team, the offense was bringing his team down because they weren't, you know, holding up their end of the bargain. That DB coach was Trey Oliver. <laughs> so, Man. Coach, so coach Oliver, I've known him for a very long time. He is a very personable person. He speaks his mind. He's, he's not afraid to, you know, tell it like it is. So he's, he's one of those people that I've watched over the years, you know, grow and become, a great football coach. I mean, he was a great football coach then. You know, he's a little, you know, he's calm, he's calm, actually calmed down a little bit, believe it or not. <laughs> but back in 2002, <laughs> he was just one of those guys that, you know, you had to, you, you had to like because, you know, he just, he said, he said what was on his mind and he spoke his mind at all times. And he's turned that central program. He was actually a central uh, graduate. He was an all mm. uh, central intercollegiate athletic uh, defense back and punter. So he's that's he's I think that he's was home. from 1994 to 97, as a matter of fact. So, I mean, it wasn't just a couple of years later. He's 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 talking uh, he's, he's talking that smack on the as a DV coach. I love it. I love it. Yeah, he, he's always been he's always been a guy that, you know, you're not going to back down. He's not going to back down off anything, but he's turned his alma mater into probably the class of HBCU football. And this is a great chance for him and his team to show what they've got against one of the best teams in FBS. Man, that is. That is, I never knew that about him. I, I started looking into a little bit of his backstory, and I did see that he did have a couple of different coaching spots. I believe this is the second time that he has coached. Uh, and this is the first time it's being head coach for NC Central, but I believe he also coached uh, as a position coach for NC Central as well, if I'm not mistaken there. So am I right about that? Yes, he's uh, he's been a defensive uh, backs coach at Central. He was defensive coordinator at Southern University mm -hmm. before he took the uh, – Central job as head coach, so he's uh, made the run. CU football, very knowledgeable guy, very, you know, committed to building a program. And again, he's a he's a quote machine. Like he just says some stuff that you know will make you laugh and you know make you you know think a little bit as well. So he's definitely built for the job of being a college football coach. Make no mistake about it. Well, yeah, it looks like that way, man, because, I mean, he took over that team. This is his sixth season now as the head coach for NC Central, and he's taken the team and completely flipped it around, and they've got a national championship to, to show for it as well now. And he's had some – he's he's had um, Darius Richard and Latrell Collier there, at two studs there at quarterback and running back. But now – Walker Harris has taken over. Uh, Jamari Taylor looks like a guy, and, and Mac Brown talked very highly about him in his press conference uh, this week. How do you feel the transition and kind of similar to North Carolina, life after Drake May? Okay, yeah. what's that going to be like with Max Johnson? Unfortunately, now it's uh, it's been turned over to Connor Harrell. Look really for uh, look forward to seeing what he does as well. But what's that transition been like for Walker Harris? And how do you feel like it's going to go? What's the what's the general feel for the team with Harris and Taylor now uh, taking control of this team and, and, and leading it forward? 
Well, Harris, for starters, they love that young man there because mm -hmm. there were times when other programs at different levels would kind of reach out to oh. him because, you know, he was sitting behind Davius Richard. And he said, no, this program gave me a chance. I'm going to stick it out and see what I can, you know, get from this program. And lo and behold, he's the starting quarterback. Again, he's not as he's not as big. Davius Richard was listed at 6'3, 215. I think he was closer to 235 myself. And he was, he was, he was a stud athlete, but you know, Harris is a little lither, you know, 6'3, 195, but he still has a strong arm. I think the thing that would probably help is that that offensive line gels in time. I don't, I mean, it may not help them against Carolina, but when the time, when the time comes for me to me act play, they'll be fine. You know, that that's a team that, you know, they have the weapons. Taylor is a back who kind of sort of reminds me of Marshall Falk. Not, not saying he's going to be hall of fame, Marshall Falk, but you know, that, that combination of being able to, you know, carry the ball and then catch it out of the backfield and do some things with it. And once again, Davis is a real tall receiver, 6'4", 6'5", 195 pounds. He just hasn't had the opportunities to get as many receptions as he probably would like because, again, Harris has been trying to, you know, kind of fight for his life a little bit back there, you know, with that young offensive line. But um, I think that transition is going smoothly. They uh, opened up a 21 to nothing lead on Alabama State in the Orange Blossom Classic, had to sweat out some anxious moments there, but were able to do it. I think what caught up with them against Elon is that this is a, a vast, like it was a vastly North different North Carolina central team in 2023. This was a vastly different Elon team. Or this was a much better, more focused Elon team that didn't, you know, take central for granted. And that's why they uh, jumped out to a 24 lead and ended up winning that game 41 to 19. But I feel like that, I feel like transition is going to go well for central. This is a team that Trey Oliver's uh, his, his message has always been culture over scheme. And he builds his program on the type of character that his young men have and on off the field as well as on the field. So I think that the transition is going to go smoothly. It's going to hurt them, you know, when it comes to these non-conference games. But Trey Oliver has always said, I'd rather go 0-5 or 0-6 in non-conference games and then go 5-0 and in the MEAC, which is probably what's going to end up happening this year. Right. Yeah, um, I, I want to reverse it back to uh, Coach Oliver. Um, so he came in in 2019, took over the program. His overall record for the entire season was four and eight, three and five in the MEAC. Then, you know, he gets back on track six and five, four and one, then 22, 10 and one, four and one, 23, nine and three, four and one. So Dang I guess up. my question is if, if, if you think that Coach Oliver has um, another successful season or two, you know, get, wins another national title. At, at his level, do you think other – is there a fear that around the campus that big-time schools might come calling? I think that's a, I think that's a reasonable fear. I mean, again, this is, a, this, is a, this is a guy with endless personality, and we all know that college football coaches, these are the ones that can sell water to a whale, basically. And Trey right. Oliver is one of those guys. You know, he could, he could, he could, he could probably, you know, he, he's one of those used car salesmen of a, uh, you know, of a, of a hilarious nature. So there's not, there's not a doubt in my mind that even a, a higher level FCS, you know, like a Elon or a Campbell, if they were struggling or even, you know, a lower level FBS, like a Georgia Southern or a Georgia state or what have you, there's no doubt in my mind that if uh, North Carolina Central wins another HBCU national championship this year, that people are going to come calling for Trey Oliver. But I think it's always going to is as big of a personality as he is. He's a real solid family kind of guy, and North Carolina Central has been his home for half of his life. It would probably be very very hard for him to walk away. Not saying he would. He actually you know weighed the pros and cons of doing so like that. There's absolutely a chance that other programs are going to seek him out because he's just that kind. of yeah, uh, I, he's went out there and he's put on a show. And quite frankly, it wouldn't surprise me if um, teams haven't already started started calling. But there is something to be said about being home. And, and I think we understand that a lot. And, uh, you know, guys look forward to, to going home and staying home. And they want to build something maybe where they first started or a place that gave them a chance or the first place that really believed in them, uh, to say the least. Mac Brown, a guy that... 
uh, had chances at other places. You know, before he came to North Carolina, comes to North Carolina, gets an established program, gets to go to Texas, wins a national championship, retires, and says there's only one place. If I'm coming out of retirement, I'm only going to one place, and that is back home to North Carolina. Could see uh, where, where Trey Oliver. Uh, I mean, he's built a successful program. My leaf. In a, at this point in time, and who knows what happens in the future? Quite frankly, I, he's got he's got big time head coach written all over him. In my opinion, that's just me uh, because you're successful at any level. You're successful for a reason. So uh, yes. that's one thing. But let's turn over to uh, the transfer portal this year. Now, one thing Trey Oliver did, I don't think I, I'm I'm too happy with, uh, but I did a little research <laughs> here, and uh, I think you know where maybe I'm going with this. But uh, they picked up a transfer out of the ACC, out of a team that happens to be eight miles up the road from Chapel Hill, out of Duke, a wide receiver, Mikai Wall. Uh, tell me what uh, that – I mean, that's a, that's, a, that's a big transfer, a guy uh, that comes in. I think he was a three- or four-star coming in, and for him to transfer down to the, the FCS and come to a place like NC Central – says a lot about Trey Oliver as a recruiter. I think we can just right. say that to say the least. He even had uh, one. I think he had a guy, and I cannot say his name. Uh, it, it was – I'm not that good with names, so I'm not even going to attempt it. But he had one of the uh, – a star, uh, I think it was offensive lineman, transferred to South Carolina uh, and is playing over there in the FBS uh, right now yeah. as we speak. South Carolina team that actually looks fairly decent so far this year. Um, tell me what his impact on the team is going to be. I think what you he's probably going to give Davis the assistance that he needs come MEAC season because Davis is going to see a lot of double teams. He saw a lot of double teams last year in the right. MEAC, and that and that's what hurt them in the one MEAC game they lost, and they lost it in resounding fashion. <laughs> Howard beat them fifty to twenty on November fourth. I'll never forget because I was covering the Delaware State football game for HBCU Sports, and it was a, a the game started our game start the game I covered started at twelve, and Howard. And North Carolina Central started around three, four o'clock. So I covered the game. I write my story. I get back on the road because Dover is a 45 minute drive from my home in Wilmington. So I get home, you know, I actually detour, get myself a little cheesesteak first, you know, got to have, gotta have some good food. <laughs> so you know, when I, I was up in Philadelphia, I did not get to get me one. And I'm really oh, upset man. about that. Well, yeah. If you go back, if you go back, yeah. don't let this, this is for any North Carolinian and South Carolinian listening to this podcast. Take it from a Delawarean with plenty of Philadelphia experience. If people tell you to go to Pat's or Geno's, don't go. <laughs> don't go. Pat, put that in the notes. Pat's and, Gen Pat's and Geno's are the tourist cheesesteaks. You want to uh, go to a place like Gooey Louie's, Jim's, Dallas Sandro's. <laughs> Gooey Louie. Louie's, yes. It is a great, great cheesesteak, great chicken cheesesteak. I and mean, that's that, a great name for it. If you're going to make a cheesesteak, I mean, I won't. Yeah, Gooey Louie. I'll take that. Yeah, so I mean, that sounds good. You, you want to go to Gooey Louie's, Jim's, Dallas Sandro's, Ishka Bibbles, or any corner store anywhere in Philadelphia. But if they tell you Pat's and Geno's, they're lying to you. And that is your public service announcement from your official uh, cheesesteak representative of the Hill Brothers podcast. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, yes. We got a pie representative. Now we got a cheesecake representative. That's what I'm talking about. We are expanding here. Oh, man. Well, he's going to eat his meat and cheese anyway, so. Uh, Amen, brother. You don't really uh, need much I am, help. I am super picky. I, uh, you know, I just I don't like the way it, it smells. You know, some of the, the vegetables and the things, and you put onions on stuff, and I just get scared. I'm not afraid. I'm I'm a man, but I'm a, I'm I'm not afraid to admit. Stand on my principles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So I, I just I just want to go back to Walker Harris, and, okay. and particularly in the uh, the game against Elon. You know, he, he threw four touchdowns, three interceptions, 181 yards. Now, it looks like he came back against Alabama State, had a pretty decent game. Um, was the product of his game in Elon the lack of pass protection, or was it maybe just first game jitters? First home start for a guy who's waited three years for this moment is probably, you know, the jitters got to him. And he faced an Alabama State defense that was actually top three in FCS last year to open the season. So mm -hmm. I don't I don't think Elon themselves scared him by any stretch of the imagination. I just feel like it was it was the first time because O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. I don't know if you guys have ever been there, but it's a bunch of college football game. You know, it's right in the heart of Durham. The the central fans 
Eagle Pride Amplified, those folks are bonkers. Like I, there, it's been years since I've been down there for a game, but I've been there a few times, and it's just been like, are these people actually going to sit down at any point? Are they, you know, is everybody okay here? Do, you, do we need some, uh, do we need some uh, medicine for these folks? <laughs> they love, they love their North Carolina, they love their North Carolina Central football. So, you know, seeing that probably, you know, as a starter for the first time, probably was like, okay, I don't want to let these folks down. And it probably got to them a little bit, but Elon's a really good football team for, you know, an FCS level. They'll, they'll likely compete in the Coastal Athletic Association uh, this year, especially since Delaware and Richmond are ineligible since they're moving up to FBS. But yeah, I think, I think it was more so, you know, just those first game jitters, but he's got to get over those quickly because I mean, Chapel Hill. I mean, that, that's, a, I mean, that's, 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 it doesn't get much bigger than that in North Carolina. So he's got to be ready for right. that challenge. And I think he will be, but it's just, you know, that first start at home, you really want to impress the home folks. And he probably just, you know, try to do a little too much and that costs them, you know, falling behind 24 to nothing in that game. Right. So let me ask you, we, we've talked about Walker Harris. We've talked about Jamari Taylor. This is a guy, I'm, Jamari Taylor, you, you said Marshall Falk earlier. You hit me in the heartstrings. I, I love some Marshall Falk. My my favorite football team is the Rams, and it's because of the greatest show on turf. I've got an Isaac Bruce uh, canvas print right there on the wall as we speak. Uh, I used to love the number 28 myself, and uh, Alan, can, uh, Alan can attest to this because uh, – like, as a matter of fact, I'm one of the biggest Rams. I'm a Rams fan because of him because he had a Christmas ornament. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit me, hit me in the fields there. I love it. Absolutely love it. But uh, yeah, I, I've looked into Jamara. He looks great. But tell me, who are we not talking about? Who is that hidden gem that that producer that nobody talks about? Uh, it's on NC Central that North Carolina needs to take a look at and keep an eye on. Well, defensively, Cole Jones. Uh, Junior defensive back, junior safety, 5'10", 195. I am going to tell you guys how old I am <laughs> with this reference. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles, long time ago, had a safety that wore number 20. No, I'm not talking about Brian Dawkins. I'm talking about the late, great Andre Waters. And Andre Waters was a dude who would hit you and could also make plays, you know, you know, in the, in the passing game. And Cole Jones is one of those guys. He's probably going to be one of the defensive backs that makes the MIAC all first team this year. If he doesn't, it's a crime. He's a very talented young man. He's the engine. He's the engine on that defense. Uh, Ja'Kai Brevard, the linebacker from uh, Durham. He's the, uh, he's the leading tackler, but Cole Jones is a kid that I think a lot more people should be looking at, especially since he's got two years of eligibility left. I mean, he's a talent. I mean, he, he hits hard, he covers, and he just has a motor. Like you can't, like if you block him, you need to make sure you block him two or three times and make sure he's down, you know. So he's one of those guys that you really need to look out for, you know, in terms of what North Carolina Central does on defense. I'll have to keep that in mind. I did not hear that name, but I am definitely going to have to keep that in mind. Kind of looking, as a matter of fact, I've got his stats pulled up right here for the last game. Had two solo tackles, one assisted, three total there, and um, did not have a breakup. But uh, he does seem – I'm kind of going back and looking at some of the stats as we speak. And, uh, yeah, he does look like a guy that uh, statistically that he, he could cause some problems. As a matter of fact, our star corner, our, 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 our money maker out there in 28, Elijah Huzzy, came from East Tennessee State. You know, everybody at each – doesn't matter what level that you are, there are ball players everywhere. And um, you can't in, in any given Saturday, you know, Mac Brown made a reference. He's made it the past couple of weeks about North Carolina playing to the standard because North Carolina's had issues with uh, winning games. They're supposed to win. Um, they, they, he's had some issues with that. And, um, you know, you can't take a single team lightly. He said, do you think um, uh, Marcus Freeman up there? And Notre Dame's thinking, boy, you know, right before that game was like, oh, man, and I use a great team to have on the schedule at home. One loss later, somebody overlooking there. You know, I mean, Carolina has been in a situation where they've been nine and one and in the season nine and five. Uh, they were six and oh last year and ended the season eight and five. You know, no matter who you're playing, you cannot such. I mean, uh, we played Charlotte last week, game was 38 to 20. Probably could have been, probably should have been, uh, you know, more high scoring, uh, let you know. Should have kept him out of the end zone a couple of times, but hey, 
you got beat over the top. You never know who these guys are. Uh, they, I mean, the guys are playing everywhere. So North Carolina, you know, by all means, everybody's saying, you know, in North Carolina should take care of NC Central pretty easily. I know you mentioned a couple of times, but uh, they got ball players, and ball players can make can can make the difference, man. Um, all you need is just a couple of plays downfield, and all of a sudden, you got a tight back and forth ball game. So, yeah. I'm looking forward personally to this game myself. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a fun one. Alan, you're going to be there uh, live and in person. I, I'm actually looking forward to and I really wish I was going to be there because uh, evidently this game is going to be very similar to that of uh, a game that we had a couple seasons ago against Florida A&M, the Rattlers. Uh, they came to I have Chapel an extra ticket. Well, yeah, um, but I'm busy that day, unfortunately. That's why I'm not going, but yeah. Um, you know the they, they the bands played together and it was a, and it was an honoring uh, of the HBCU that was there and it was just a fun time. We're both former band guys and uh, sing for an A and M's band was just that was fun and then they collabed with North Carolina. Evidently, this is going to be a very similar thing they're doing at NC Central, so the atmosphere should be fun. The fans for Central should obviously be there, just being right down the road, and uh, I think it's going to be an absolutely fun atmosphere alan you got any more uh further questions before we wrap this thing up no you, you kind of saw it because my last question was going to be uh you know band related since we were both band guy uh marching band guys but you know i was just wondering you know what kind of show do they put on because i mean yeah. fam, you put on a heck of a show when we was there that year the marching 100 know. yeah i'll tell you man the march 100 they're a hard act to follow like their yeah. rendition of the uh I know you guys probably have heard this song. I mean, it's been inescapable since it uh, first was released, but Not Like Us by Kendrick Lamar has just absolutely taken over the HBCU band sphere. And to, <laughs> to date, I've heard at least five different versions from different bands. And the Marching 100's version of Not Like Us is the, is the winner thus far. <laughs> it's the clubhouse leader. But Central's band, they put on a pretty good show as well. I don't know if it's Marching 100 level, but you're going to get some – Good old school R&B hits. You're going to get some modern, you know, stuff that you hear on the radio. You'll see the lovely girls in the uh, North Carolina Central Maroon and Silver dancing around. So you guys are going to get a good show. Make no mistake about it. I don't know if it's March 100 level, but Central's band is pretty good as well. Well, I'll definitely be looking for uh, their rendition of Not Like Us. <laughs> yeah. How good's the drum line? I'm a drum line guy. I, I, you know, I love I don't know. the drum line. I mean, man. That marching one hundred drum line, boy. <laughs> yeah, they're I, they're I, loud I, and they're good. I, and, and I they don't get. know if they have some sort of secret weapon or something that gets their drums to sound as crisp as the marching one hundreds drums do. But it's absolutely unbelievable to hear in person or on television. And I just, I mean, if you had to make me, I mean, I'm not going to get in the business of ranking bands here because I mean, you know. But if you had to make me pick, I feel like the marching one hundred tops the list. I mean. You could say the same, um, the uh, Ocean of Soul, you know, Jackson State's band, um, the Sonic Boom of the South. There are so many talented bands in the Black College sphere that it would just be hard to rank them all. But if you have a chance, you know, just pull up their appearance, pull up any, you can pull up just about any HBCU in the MEAC or SWAC or even the CIAA or the SIAC. Those are the two Division II Black College conferences and check out their bands and they do great work as well. So it's going to, it's going to be a fun time. I feel like there was, um, Trey said that there's going to be a joint tailgate as well. So there's going to be a chance for central fans and, and Tar Heel fans to kind of fellowship a little bit before the game, which I think is pretty cool because yeah. it doesn't what really quickly, this doesn't have to feel like, you know, a, I don't want to say, yeah, or, or a bitter rivalry or, you know, the yeah. enemy coming in. Like, yes, this is going to be a football game. And yes, North Carolina is probably going to win. <laughs> but it still means that you, it doesn't mean that, you know, people can't get together and have a good time, you know, eat some good food. Because, yeah. I, I mean, it's the South. I know y'all get busy down there with the food, man. I got to get I got to get back to North Carolina one of these days just for the food, <laughs> man. But, yeah, you know, everybody's going to. Very funny you mentioned. I got an extra I ticket. There you go. <laughs> Come Dang. on down, brother. Is it if the transmission fixed? Come on down, brother. Come on. Man, down. It's, it, it's tempting. I'm not gonna lie. It's tempting. <laughs> it's there you go. Tempting. Forty yard line. <laughs> oh yes. man. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I just posted our UNC Charlotte vlog because uh, every time we do a every time we go to a game day, I, I try to make sure that we have a vlog to go up to to give people a fan experience and just you know 
share that with them. But yeah. uh, North Carolina has actually changed the way that they're doing uh, the like the tailgating scene, but also a thing they they introduced this year called the block party, where they turned the they normally would set up <clears throat> tents and have food and things of that nature, but they've really went out big with it. Live music, big jumbo TV screen, right. vendors everywhere, balloons, everything. It was a rocking time over there by the bell tower, right before you walk into Keenan Stadium. So if they're doing a joint thing, that's gonna be awesome. I have a yeah. feeling that's gonna be a fun time. Yeah. And uh, Alan. This is putting all the pressure on you, brother, because I'm getting <laughs> those 10 people to tell uh, tell you that we need a vlog. We got, what, eight? Or no, no, no. We got two so far. We we, we just need a few two, more. I was about to say, where did we get eight from? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got two so far. So we're, we're, we're trying to work on getting out and do a vlog for us so of the NC Central mm -hmm. game. So, um uh, can, can we get a, uh, a can, can we get an Allen? Can you do us an NC Central vlog real quick? While you're on the screen there, CJ, you mind you mind helping us out? Oh sure. No, no you don't. You don't have to do that. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just quickly tell him, uh, Alan. I think CJ's got to tell you something, bro. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just, <laughs> I, I, I want, I want, no I want, I want him to hear you say, Alan. I need an NC Central vlog. Oh, just go ahead. Well, Alan. This is your this is your time to shine, brother. I mean, this is where you get to, you know, meet the best of the best from black college um, football. You get to, you know, get some good food. You get to hear the bands play. This is your chance to really, you know, get the Hill Brothers Hill brethren. You know what I'm saying? So go on ahead and, you know, make that make that vlog happen, man. You know, yes. you, never, you never you never know what can happen, you know, once that camera starts rolling. And that can be a good thing. So, yeah, man, go ahead. Go ahead. Make that vlog happen. <laughs> yeah yes you know what that counts as eight right there there's your 10 right there there we go that's how we do it right there holy smokes man this has been a great time cj we have absolutely enjoyed this uh like thank you so much you, you've been you've been a a wealth of insight to us uh, into NC Central and also HBCUs. Tell them exactly where they can catch your show that you're doing over there uh, about HBCUs one more time. Well, we are at um, our website where we cover, you know, we do a lot of writing as well. So, I mean, you know, we're full, we're full service. You know, we write, we report, we podcast, we vlog, we shoot the breeze. We talk about a bunch of other stuff. HBCUsports.com is the website. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash at HBCU sports. That's where you can find all the black college sports information that you've ever wanted to find in your life. Trust me. And also be sure and go awesome. follow him on his own personal YouTube channel. And that is Chris Stevens Wright on YouTube. It's going to be down in the uh, description below. Be sure and go check that out. And uh, man, we absolutely appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to North Carolina versus NC Central coming this week. It's a 6 p.m. kickoff. Going to be under the lights before uh, before we know it. And uh, maybe maybe if the lights will kick on, we'll we'll have some. You know, the you, Alan will get to finally get to see uh, North Carolina's light show that they they put on uh, now in the evening time. So uh, I've been in it. It's it's pretty cool. I like it. I think they've done so, a little updating to it. So I think it's going to get even better. Just saying. And they also updated the intro video, which I thought was really good as well. Uh, I always love the pyro and everything else that goes on. I just gives me a little tear there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to it, man. Thank well, you for uh, thank you for coming out here. Say again. I said if this weekend's game lasts as long as last weekend's game, it'll definitely be dark. <laughs> yeah, dude. Tons of penalties. Tons of penalties. Good <laughs> lord. Um. Yeah, that was it. Was bonkers uh, how long. If, that was. I, don't, I don't. I don't know who does the cruise for you guys' games, but if you have a Miac crew, yeah, because <laughs> Miac and Swag games, you know, there's 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 more laundry than you know a New York City uh, tenement. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, it'll, it'll probably be an ACC crew, but yeah, you know, there could well, be. Well, they ain't no done. better. I promise, bro. <laughs> they, 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 dude, they are no better. <laughs> they are no, no better. ACC they crew, are man. the worst in the Power Four. Uh, that is to say the least. Um, yeah. yeah, should be a fun time. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great time. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for being here. And as always, go Heels. Go Heels.